Now many people have not switched to Windows Core yet, despite the rather obvious benefits in terms of saving RAM and the ability to consequently use fewer resources, allowing you to build a higher density within your environment. So today I'm going to quickly run through what's necessary to get Windows Core up and running. And with that in mind, let's go through the basics, which includes getting it onto a domain. Now for the point of saving a bit of time here, I'm going to fast forward to the part where we're actually logging in for the first time, where it's going to ask you to change the admin password. This is normal behavior, and it's the local admin we're talking about. Now if you run an sconfigure command, you can start manipulating. But before we do that, let's just show that I'm connected to my network where the domain is. Now I've run an sconfigure, I can go ahead and select the first option on the list, which is to join the domain. Now, as luck would happen, uh, I typed this wrong the first time around, so we'll have to do this twice. But not to worry, we do get on the domain relatively quickly. So in this case, it's telling me I can't find the domain, so I select option one again, run through the process, and this time correctly type the password. This is what happens when you're doing things in a hurry. Once the domain password is entered, you are also going to get prompted for would you like to add to the domain? and then the new computer name. So this is the one that it's going to be once it joins the domain. So we're going for Windows Core and it's going to ask me for again admin details in order to change the computer object on the domain. Finally after that point it's going to ask for a reboot. We're going to allow it to do the reboot since we're effectively ready. Now there are other things you could do there like change the uh, configuration of Windows updates. At the moment it's set to download only I'm okay with that right now because I don't want to trigger a update during the middle of my video and waste another three to four hours while it runs through various updates of downloads and then installs. So we've now logged in as the domain admin and we're going to quickly check the sconfigure status again. And as you can see from the first line, we're now connected to a domain. So in order to administer this, we're going to do this remotely. So I'm going to hop over to my domain controller. So you could use GUIs to interact with your machine and use any of the MMCs that are available, but in this case I'm going to use the Enter PS Session in order to connect and remotely control my machine. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and go down to the system drive, create a new folder, and create a new file in that folder in order to prove that A, I have the connectivity, and B, demonstrate that PowerShell is a perfectly good way of managing these machines. I could also use a PowerShell command like install Windows feature in order to install IIS or any other component I wish. But that's kind of a subject for another video. So to quickly prove that I have done what I've just said I've done, I'll go quickly back to the Windows Core Edition, log in, and go check the system drive to show where the current file and folder I've created is. And just to prove a point, I'll enter the session again, and I'm going to go down to the same folder, and I'm just quickly create a second file. Now, realistically, this is a little bit, you know, let's call it um, pointless, but at this point, I just want to prove the connectivity is there, and that this is how I'm actually operating. Now, Anything in terms of PowerShell commands, whether it be changing IP addresses, getting services, exploring event logs, anything that you can do normally, you can do remotely. Equally, you can use the MMCs that you would normally use on a full GUI machine to explore the remote connection to a core machine. There is no difference. The cut down features in terms of what it doesn't support is relatively limited. There's not a lot that's actually less supported on core compared with a regular GUI interfaced Windows, except for you are saving money and you're saving RAM because of the smaller footprint. Now, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do and subscribe for more content.